guys? Jared Welch, Aaron Haltman back with you for another betting Bible review from RacingDudes.com. We had a huge, another huge weekend at Lexington, the final, uh, in, the, at, in Lexington Stakes at Keeneland for the final derby prep of the year. We got a wrap on that. We covered the entire Keeneland card as well as Oakland, uh, Count Fleet, and the Apple Blossom in the betting Bible last weekend. Haltman, we had another Big week, 39% combined ROI, 33% for you, 44% ROI for me. We're just chugging along. I feel like we're, we, every week we, we had a, a rough week one, and every week we've just kind of in, continued to improve that. Yep, in week one we kind of documented the mistakes uh, that, that we made. And, um, you know, I, I think it, that first week was just a little bit of a, you know, fairgrounds could be a little bit strong tricky or strange and then we just kind of didn't bet uh, correctly but yeah the last three weeks have been good uh i i enjoyed the lexington uh quite a bit as far as the actual lexington itself the stakes uh and then uh, the rest of the day uh you know it, it could have been better at at a lot of times but uh you know to i i always tell people you know that are new to racing this is not sports like you get Sports picks, you expect to hit the majority of them. And racing is very different. You just need to hit one or two, and you need to crush that opinion. You might miss a lot before you get to that one. That's kind of what Saturday was. Yeah. Um, combined, I, I'm sorry, 27% overall total ROI for you, 24% for me for four weeks of doing this. So uh, we're going to just, from now on, basically we're ramping up for the Derby. So all hands on deck for the Derby betting Bible um, coming up and you know you're right it, it, i don't know why it is but and i guess maybe it's for me personally anyways like i always i i do better i'm a better handicapper i feel like for the, for stakes races um and I, I it just seems like we <laughs> every week it's been struggle early and then close home late you know with with mm -hmm. a flurry with a couple big hits and and that's the way it's been the last couple of weeks, uh, the last three weeks for, for that matter, where it's just like, oh man, like it's been rough. We need for, this Forte Mage double or exactly to get home. And then the next week it's like, I need Tapa Trice and Verifying to get home. And then that, this past week it was, you know, I need first mission and, and an Italian uh, double, or I need the in Italian um, uh, in, uh, with the Moonlight double, or exact. Like you need these, and we, and we hammer them. And it just seems like, these last several weeks, it's been slow early, and then we just smoke them home late. Yeah, no, absolutely. Uh, no surprise this week. You know, I, the biggest opinions were towards the back half of the card. Last week, I, I kind of thought the whole card was a little tricky other than one horse. So, again, I guess I wasn't real surprised either on that because uh, certainly, you know, uh, with Squire Creek and then this week with First Mission, there are horses that you loved, but they weren't uh, early on the card. So you kind of had to kind of wait it out there. Yeah, all right. So we're going to go through this race by race uh, with you know, the whole card there um, at Keeneland and kind of go through how we, you know, what the betting Bible looks like, as well as kind of how we laid it out uh, for the betting side of things. So we started off with a big, and this is what's interesting about the day, you know, for a day that we, we combined for 39% positive ROI, 33 and 44, we started off very poorly. I mean, you had almost a third of your bankroll gone. Uh, on the first race, I had fifty dollars to win. You had eighty dollars to win on the seven magical power. Finished third. Really was it <laughs> was a scary part. You're like, oh, this is not like that race unfolded the complete opposite of how you envisioned. I mean, where the three was sitting is where I thought the seven was was going to sit, and where the seven sat is where I thought the three was going to sit. So I knew up the backside that this ra this race was not going to go our way. Uh, it was awkward. I, I, you watch the replays uh, of the seven, and it's like, yeah, that horse will sit about the second, just kind of track whoever gets out in front, and and probably should just uh, take it on and not be in any trouble whatsoever. And that was not the case. I, I knew on the first turn when the horse was second to last, so that this bet's not going to happen. And listen, that's that's horse racing in a nutshell. You have to have opinions, and you and you know you have to bet them. But when I've said it a hundred times, when the gates open. They fall where they fall, you know, and not blaming the jockey, not blaming anybody. The worst maybe just didn't want to get up there either. It's just, it's one of those things. So, yeah, uh, uh, an opinion that uh, didn't come through early that was not comfortable for sure, but I can't really say I regret it. Uh, you know, I thought the horse was one to five to win the race. The horse's off odds were three to five. Just didn't do what I thought the horse would do, and that happens. Yeah, that 
I was I was frustrated afterwards because I, I initially I looked at the race and said, ah, yeah, I'm not, not going to play a win on him because I think the three is dangerous. When I looked at Byers, it, it showed that way. When you looked at time form, the magic magical power was a far and away standout, not even close standout. And so ultimately it leaned me. I was like, okay, I, I, I he, that might, you know, I think he is going to be tough to beat. And it was more of, I'm not set, sure the field's that great, you know? And so yeah. it just, I just really thought he could get home even without running a huge race. And yeah, you're right. You you knew pretty quick there that you're like, uh oh, this this horse better be and you know, a horse that had lost on debut as well. So you're like, he better turn it up. If he better be a different horse uh, than he was last time out if he wants to win this. And of course he wasn't. So no. uh started off slow. Wasn't great, but you know, you and I both knew going into it that the meat of this thing, the the core of the of the Bible here was gonna be what made or break it, not that race. I mean he was three to five. So it's like even if you win that, it's not like it's gonna be a huge profit anyways. Uh, we knew we could get it back later in the card. So next race, or we skipped race two. Go to race three. Um, you had a win bet on the three. I, I put a daily double, eleven to the seven. Um, neither one of those cashed. <laughs> this one was when I became very upset with with the, how the day was going because I I just thought I thought I played it good. The double was not paying as best as good as I thought it was going to do, but it still would have, I think it was like five or six to one maybe. And it just felt, I thought, I thought portfolio company got a terrible trip from IRAD. And I was, it was just like, dude, what are you doing? And, and then the next race, I get the whole, the horse that I, you know, singled or in the double as well home. So it became extra frustrating. Yeah. Frustration on a different level for me as well, because I had three to win and, and the three got second and got beat right at the wire. You know? three and so, it, as bad as the first horse ran and you're $80 down, this three was seven to two, looked like a winner. You're going to get all that back almost. You're going to be a $10 short pretty much, you know, depending on what the breakage was at Kentucky because you blew up by the uh, penny. But anyway, you're going to be roughly $10 behind or down after losing that $80 bet, the three looks like a winner until the very last stages. So, uh, yeah, I, I went from now I'm down 100 to for a good portion of the stretch, thinking I was only going to be down about 10 bucks. So I'm with you. That was a that was just a, a really frustrating race. Yeah. So we skipped races uh, uh, four, five, and six. Neither one of us really had much of a, a strong opinion, not even with your money, is what I listed mm -hmm. on mine. So it was just one of those races that, um, hey, yo, I don't, I didn't regret any of those. Like, do you ever do that? Have you had any of those yet? Where, in, as far as in the Bible, where you're like, I skipped it and it just kind of, I should have played it because I think it went exactly like I thought it would have. Yeah, if you had to follow my picks, uh, I hit the exacta in this one on the sixth race. So <laughs> it, you know, it is what it is. I, that doesn't mean I would have put an exacta as the wager. Maybe I would have put a winner on the horse that finished second, you know? So, but no, I, again, first time starter for Bill Mott, who was hyped, but first time starters for Bill Mott don't always run all that well. So I was a little worried about that horse. And then uh, the Aspies horse I had on top, it's like, I don't know if I want to put money on Steve Asmussen at Keeneland. And I, I love Steve Asmussen. He's my favorite trainer. But at Keeneland, it, it's just not good. So I skipped it. All right. So now is when I if, it, if you had a panic meter, this is when I was pounding it after yeah. this race. Race seven. I thought we were in major trouble after this race. Race seven. Uh, you and I have similar opinions. I have a win bet, $25 win bet on Prince Dioro. You've got an exact box with him and uh, the eight horse master game. Similar ideas though. We both thought the four would be tough to beat. The horse got for one gets pounded. The horse six to one morning line gets you know bet under two to one, which I mean, and then <laughs> he gets beat by who else? Barber Road. Yeah. It, down the stretch too, the whole way you're thinking you still might get this. Like he, he's just like just just go on with it. Just go on with it. Barber Road. I mean. Barbara Road did everything he could do to lose that race because that's what he does. Yep. And he still somehow managed to get by Prince Deep Doro. Again, he was a $25 win bet. He was, let's say, close to two to one there. It would have got me close back to even at that point and getting, I just needed to have some sort of momentum more than anything getting into uh, you know the, the, the main part of the card. And when that happened, 
I just thought, uh-oh, like, um, Barbara Rowe just beat me. I, I think I might quit. It's funny because that, that's just a killer for you. My exacta never had a shot. So, I, well, I shouldn't say never had a shot, but at the, in the stretch, you could tell it didn't. But I was uh, I was kind of relieved. My original bet was a 4-1 straight exacta because I just thought, well, Barbara Road will probably get up for second. Yeah. And then the more I looked at it, I thought, no, I kind of like the eight. I kind of like Master Game. So I'm just going to box these two. And I, it's another one I, I, I didn't think Master Game – and again, I'm not blaming anybody. It's just the trip that he got was not what I envisioned for him. And then Barbara Road saving the ground, got up, and I I knew the whole stretch Barbara Road was going to win that race because, uh, you know, when you kind of are slumping early, stuff like that happens. And before it ran great, it was a good bet and a good pick by you. I, I think you would do it again uh, if you had the chance. It's just he got out kicked by Barbara Road. Yeah, I mean, I felt I felt great about the bet, even though I was just knowing that the horse got bet down. I, was, I thought it was a good sign that the horse was getting pounded, you know. So I was like, all right, you know, I got the right horse. And, you know, I really thought it was a good ride, you know. Like, it just, yeah. like, it, it just, the horse just didn't have anything left, you know. So um, frustrating. I know some people thought maybe they wish they would, I read, would have pulled away a little bit more uh, earlier, like earlier in the race, they didn't go super fast, but in my mind, I'm like, dude, you got beat by Barbara Road. Like, I don't want to hear it. You know, you, you had, you had, you should have had a horse late if you were any good. So, um, yeah, so we're both down big going into, I believe we, so you didn't play race eight. I played race eight and this was one actually that I was, I would say, let me take that off so you can see fairly confident and I really like the 12 in this race. Star Divine, I, I thought this horse ran a, a sneaky good race uh, last the end, of, the end of last year when she, uh, at her last race. It, she ran a good race, got third to Caravelle, had some trouble in the stretch. I thought, okay, she can win this thing. Um, and so I played 12 over 10. I played 12 over 4, 12 over 1. Um, and really, dude, the race unfolded and happened exactly like I was thinking it would it's just the 12 didn't have enough kick to get home I mean, he got third looked like it was in great position twilight gleaming was just way too good so 12 10 exacto was the closest i got the a got second and star divine got third but you know this is one of those i play these pretty much one at least one of these every every week it feels like and you know the, these exactos will pay it's just trying to get them home is is so fresh it's one thing whenever you pound an exacto that we really really like which we have had success with but when you have these where you're you've got the horse that's maybe five six seven to one on top it gets really frustrating to play these well yeah but again if you hit one out of ten you're going to be profitable and that's that's yeah. horse racing and that's the toughest thing to try to you know I, I don't know what the right word is try to get through people's heads is Look, that's you didn't make a bad wager. It didn't come in, but the return on investment for that wager would have been great. And look, you would have hit one on Florida Derby Day, and you kind of messed up the structure of it. And well, I guess you did hit it, but I hit it, know, but it should have paid more. Yeah, right. Yeah, you didn't you didn't uh, level it right. Um, but that just did. I mean, you, you look at this and you go, well, gosh, this guy's missing all these exactos. Well, they're not easy to hit. <laughs> and so that's why when you hit them, you got to make them pay. Right. And and I'm not boxing them. I'm playing them straight. Yeah. I'm trying to take an opinion that's not a popular opinion. Like, it's not like in Italian, you know, or something where it's like, okay, that horse is going to get for, I mean, you're You're taking a leap on who you even think is going to win. Yeah. And so it's tough, but like you said, it is, I mean, I see these will pays as, as you know, when the race is about to go and you're like, dude, I, just, I get this, you know, 12, one home. Holy cow. This thing will pay huge like that. So yeah. you really just need to hit one. And I, I personally love when I like, yeah, they're not hitting that. It didn't hit. But when I looked at that race, I was like, okay, one, I really like the 12 yep. and I'm going to mat like I got a $12 exacta. You know, if you, it seems little, but you think about twelve dollar magnified on a one dollar base, like those those will pay huge on a twelve ten, which I thought was extremely likely, likely, and it really was close. It just you know, yeah. um, the twelve didn't kick home. But I, I just like look being a, being able to be in the position to be like, listen, this is my opinion. I I feel strongly about this opinion, and if it hits, I'm gonna max what the profits could be. Yep. 
Um, so yeah, so you know, missed that one. Go to race nine. This is when the fun started. Um, you and I both were at this point, I believe, down like mm, 150, I think 120. 120, okay. So we're both down 120 going into really the last. I have three bets left, you've got four, I think, but uh, last several bets here, and we knew this going in. You have we get to the Lexington here. You've got a hundred dollar win bet on first mission. I've got a fifty dollar double single to first mission. So essentially, we both have first mission to win into an Italian and with the moonlight in the next race. This is a make or break race. You miss this race, you you ain't getting your money back. You know, this is it's a loss on the day. So this was a huge race. Arabian Lion looked like he was about to steal the thing, and first mission, man, he looked good here. Yeah, this was the big turnaround, obviously, and it was uh, it was a great race from first mission. I mean, he he, uh, if he if you would have told me he would have had to run that good to win that race, I would have been pretty nervous. And I was, if you watch this live, I was very nervous at the stretch because it really looked like Arabian Lion uh, was was running away with it. Now, you know, during the live show, I kind of thought, oh man, Arabian Lion kind of quit and 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 did what he always does. I don't know that that's the case <laughs> when you look back at the rest of the horses they really weren't gaining on arabian uh, lion there was only one horse that really gained any ground on him and that was first mission and look yeah after the live show went back watched the replay said that was a pretty good race look back and compared the times for that specific day i want to be very clear i don't compare times from different tracks different days but the times for that specific day they ran three mile and 16th races First mission was a second and a half faster than everybody that, that ran at the distance, and that included Barber Road. So um, then you get the buyers back, at the, which I don't care anything about, but he got a 98 buyer, so that whatever, you take that for whatever you want. But he ran an absolute monster race to win this one. So uh, the opinion was right. We crushed that opinion, so that's, that's the two good things. But again, I, I don't necessarily think I thought he was going to run that good, and I didn't think he'd have to run that good to win, but he ran a tremendous race. Yeah, watching it when we were watching it live, I, you know, and I was worried about Rabian Lion, um, yeah. probably more so than you were, and, and whenever they kind of were rounding the, in, out of the turn into the stretch, I thought, oh no, like mm -hmm. he just looks like he's, you know, and, and you know, I mean, it's like, let's just be honest, like if, you know, Bob Baffert horse has that kind of running style that looks that good i mean because you know i read was not even moving on him you know so you're like yeah. oh great you know and luis Saez, this dude man this dude is the best rider in the country i swear that guy he's pumping on him you can tell he's trying to get him out and here he comes he cuts the corner brilliant move to cut the corner arabian line went wide i rad tries to kill the horse by coming <laughs> ducking in and trying you know and putting a little uh intimidation into first mission he just for a horse that's only making it was making his third start um to kind of fight through that and, and move on and go and, and run not only only run down but run away run past the arabian lion was really really impressive and i, I you, you and i this was the one right because I, I felt really good you had the cash you know you had the hundred dollar win bet that you guaranteed profit after that yeah. But I had the double, so I still was alive. I still had to get it home in the next race. But I felt extremely confident that I was going to get that home. Um, and so really, I just needed to get the first mission out of that. And uh, yeah, that was a good feeling for sure. Yeah, for sure. And you said it. I mean, when a Baffert horse turns the corner and is separating, they don't usually lose. And I know that the argument to that is going to be, well, Arabian Lion has dropped anchor, so I don't know what you're talking about. But my counter argument to that would be his last two races, he dropped anchor so fast, he went to first to last. Yeah. This race, if first mission isn't in the race or he gets traffic trouble or he doesn't fire, we're talking about Arabian Lion winning this race by about five or six lengths. So it's pretty significant what first mission did so look out for this horse i have a feeling he's going to be mentioned on another bible we do in about a month from now yeah so they're going to the preakness with him sounds mm -hmm. like it unless there's any issues but yeah they're going i mean makes sense it's uh you know five weeks out and so uh um it makes sense that he's gonna be be used a lot we'll be talking about him tomorrow as well i'm sure on a on a shake for the mm -hmm. horse or fantasy league i'm still upset about that but anyways all right so 
Uh, next race, we go into uh, the Ginny Wiley, which was the main event, the grade one Ginny Wiley. A bunch of scratches in the morning, so it really just got shortened down even more. And in Italian, with the moonlight, you and I both felt really strongly about this. We essentially both had exacta boxes. You had a $20 exacta box, two five. I played a $40 cold exacta, two over five, $30 cold exacta, five over two, um, for a total bet of 70 on top of my daily double that I needed to get home which was paying five, a little over five to one. So I wanted to make sure, like, that's why I did it. You know, you you played a win bet and uh, on first mission. I think, you, I think you paid a little over two to one, right? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Touch yep. over it. Um, I got five to one on first mission here. But, you know, the, the problem, my regret here is you bet $100. I bet $100 total, but I bet 50 base, right? Yeah. So I would have liked... My opinion, my strongest opinion was the five two, right? I mean, I felt really good about the Italian, but I used with the moonlight just in case. So you're taking a little bit of off the um, those odds. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're get, you're, you're getting five to one on two horses that I felt were the locks. You know, the, the the ones that could not lose, or at least I felt really strongly about. So I just pressed those um, five to one on that. The exacta comes home, not never even sweat the exacta really. No. Uh, I paid four to one on the exacta. I got it 40 times. You got it 20 times. These two races, man, came through and they came through big for us. Yep, for sure. And I, I, I know what you're saying, you know, but it, it, about how, gosh, I should have, you know, my regret is maybe I should have just played the two and this and that. But once the races are over and you know the results, it's really easy to go criticize not only other people, but yourself, <laughs> you know, and we all, we all do that. And it's the like problem said, that us betters have. It's that when you hit something, it's never, you never played it for enough. Yep, exactly. And when you miss it, well, I should have done this. I should have <laughs> done this. And like it. I said, I don't play that game anymore because it, it, it's just it's too easy. When the when you know what who won the race, it's really easy to go back and say, well, this is what I should have done. Well, obviously, <laughs> you know, because right after the race, I thought, why not? I just my original bet was a uh, you know twenty dollar exact a straight two five, and I thought, well, why don't I just do that? And I thought, well. First of all, the five two was paying eight dollars when they left the gate. Well, if that comes in five two, that's definitely worth it, right? I mean, so look, once the race is over, it's over, and you you can criticize yourself or others all you want, but it's easy when you know the results. So I was just happy to cash it. Like I said, you, you got you got four to one on your on your exacta there, and that's that's plenty enough. I mean, and you never this this was never in doubt. The two just took over the race. She's such a monster. Um, Dude, she about set the track record, which is by rushing fall, nearly set less than yeah. less than a second. No, way less. At 139.02 was, was the record. She ran at 139.71. Yeah. So, I mean, it, it really didn't get asked to do a whole lot. Um, and then with the Moonlight, just kind of ran, ran a really solid race. Uh, I think the only horse we were worried about, and rightfully so after what she did la last time in the Pegasus, uh, was Queen Goddess, but she just didn't fire. And, and we have, we've seen horses out of that Pegasus day that won. They have not come back to run very good, and that was kind of predictable because we kind of told you back in January that was just not a great card that we're used to seeing on uh, Pegasus day. Yeah, and that's it's ultimately why I didn't... You, I, originally, one of my bets I had, I think I, I played like a, one of the ideas I had was a two over three, five exacta, yeah. you know, just in case. And then, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to let her beat me if she does, yeah. you know, because, and honestly, I felt so good about it when they were in like halfway through the race, maybe like after a half mile, because I, I knew how close she was to an Italian. Yeah. Uh, and we said it on the show. We said it on Bleakers Off. We, you know, I was like, she can't run with that. Mm -hmm. And that was a problem she had with the race that she likes to be a little bit poorly placed, but she hasn't had to run down an Italian. And yep. an Italian just set these, just with, you know, really cruise. And the whole way around, like you said, never came out of first gear, but she has such a high cruising speed. So you knew Queen God. I felt like, okay, Queen God is not going to screw up this exacta. Because I felt like she is going to get tired, and yeah, she finished last. She tired down the lane, and you know, when they when they were coming home, uh, we, we all were like, you know, you, we all had big bets on either the exacta, uh, the exacta straight, or my double, and so I knew the double was cashed, right? I was like, all right, we got this, and then that five kind of fought with the nine a little bit. Is it just get up, just get up, and then of yeah. course she kind of kept on going, but yeah, it was really one of those 
those races that you kind of felt like you knew who was going to win and you just had to figure out, make sure how you, if the race would unfold like you thought, where just you were with the moonlight, we'd get up for second. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's just it. And Samich had the uh, try, straight try with that nine and third. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was it was fun. It was a really fun uh, two races there. All right. So we, that that really got us. You know, I, that to me, I had one more bet left in the in race eleven. Um, you know, I liked the four quite a bit. Ironic twist uh, was eight, a little over eight to one. It was fifteen to one on the morning line. Um, I just played a ten dollar win bet on the horse. Um, and you played it at a ten dollars extra box on the two twelve with twelve wins. Uh, the four, I, the four ran so good. I, I really thought the four was gonna was gonna run home, but just got a little tired late. But I thought she, I thought for the price she ran really well. Um, but yeah, the 12, 12 wins looked really good. Uh, the one, the two, I'm sorry, did not uh, did not get the job done for you. So we missed we missed we both missed that one. Yeah, th- these will pays for this exacta were way high than i way higher than i thought they would be they were like 18 and 22 dollars for a dollar and i'm sitting there thinking damn after these these two races we had this could be the one that pays more than any and really just puts us over the top of course it doesn't come in two ran horrible in this race uh you know kind of got out there like i thought she would and just didn't do much but 12 was good 12 was really good and your four was really good yeah the four i you know, anytime you, to me, it's like if you have a horse that's, you know, 15 to 1 on the morning line and, you know, still not getting bet a ton, they run like that. It's like, well, you know, what? I, I thought you get, she ran, she ran as good as probably she could have, all yep. things considered, just wasn't quite good enough. All right. Um, we, we moved to, to Oakland here. I didn't have any bets at Oakland. I originally, dude, this, these two races, I was so, I was so, originally I had bets in both of these races. You had Tay on Twist, a uh, $20 win bet. Um, she just she just wasn't good enough uh, to to do it there. But you know, originally I I love the ten and the two, which is what the exacta was. But originally I had I was going to play a straight ten over two exacta and pound it, and of course the two wins and ten gets second and ran. That was the the two ran huge. Mm-hmm. Like but I'm not going to I'm not going to say he's Matoli but just but it kind of looks like just because of the connections but yeah. Matoli like <laughs> I, I I I was shocked the horse blazed went so fast and just did not stop and it, it kind of set up how I thought it would set up for Teano Twist and that's why I liked him a lot in this race it's like oh they're going to blaze up front and they did he's going to come with a big run he did 21, was, 21 no, and 44, the horse went. I know. There was just, he was, if, you, if you're, you're going to run that fast and not stop, well, you're not going to beat him. So, no. um, another bet that's lost, but I can't really say I regret it. It, it kind of shaped up like I thought. I just didn't think Skelly would just keep on going like that. That was crazy. Well, yeah, he was, he on twist, finished third. He's really the only horse um, that made some sort of, big move right and just obviously could i mean skelly like we were on the live stream we're just like he's this is this is a disaster he's gonna fold and he just kept on going you know yeah. it would have been disgusting because you when it's done the 10 comes around you're like oh the 10 gonna gonna win this thing just get in then the, the two just yeah. keeps on going so i would have missed that one um i just ultimately didn't feel strongly enough about the race and then go to the apple blossom you didn't have a bet mostly because of no value i almost I kind of talked about it with you before. I was like trying to decide what these exact or the yeah the exactus would pay. Only four horses in the race, but I thought, man, if could we play like a huge exacta? The only way you can do that though is you have to make an opinion, right? You've got to you can't play it boxed. I mean, yep. you can't afford to take any kind of um, you know, off the off the price because it's not going to pay much. The exacta did pay. Four to one, which is in- yeah. almost five to one, which is incredible. It's incredible. And if I even mentioned it in the guide, like, listen, if you if you look at those will pays and you see one that's like either way is three to one plus, that's a good bet. Yep. And I would have played Secret Oath over Clarier straight. And I'll tell you what, Alterman, when they turned for home, I thought that was as good as cashed. <laughs> and Clarier ran monstrous. I, I've never in my whole experience of betting horses have had two horses like Secret Oath and Clarier. And that's why I stayed away from it because I love both of them. I never cash with them. They always 
beat me when I don't have them or I have them and they lose. And so that's why I said, there is no way in hell I'm putting a penny on this race. I don't trust either one of these two and I love them both. I don't want to root against either one of them. And I, I, I am a jinx when it comes to these horses. So I went in with my picks. Last time I picked Clarier, she lost. This time I picked Secret Oath, she lost. I love them both, I never get them right. I don't know. It was obviously a four horse race. It makes a weird makes for a weird running yeah. of it. You know, it's hard to, you know, the the ter- determine the pace. And obviously the hot sultry went out there and went way. I mean, it was up at one point it was like five lengths ahead of of Claire of a uh, secret oath. And you could tell T Gaff was like, I gotta get going here, you know, I kinda gotta I gotta get in closer range. And that may have ultimately been I mean, you look back, it's easy to, to, to say it now, like you said, but that may have ultimately been what lost her the race because she just didn't have quite enough to hold off Clarier late, whereas Clarier waited longer. And you know, Rosario was further back, but that middle move to kind of get in striking position to Secret or to uh, from to Hot and Sultry may have been just enough to get Secret Oath beat. Yep, the dynamics of the race got her beat because they saw that horse out there by itself and they got scared and it, with with good reason. I'm not. This is not a criticism at all. I was saying the same thing. It's all right. We'll go get her now. You know because it's a it's a short field and the horse is up by five. You you know and, and we've seen Secret Oath enough. She has a sling one move, one slingshot move. Yeah, and then that's it. We flatten. We flatten completely out, and she used it up and. She started to flatten a little bit, and then Clarier was able to go get her. So that that's that is secret oath in a nutshell. You got to time that move just right on her, or she does get a little goofy when she gets out in front. Look, go watch the Breeders' Cup uh, from last year. They turn for home. You think she's going to win because she's in front. She's looking great, but she had already used up her her little slingshot move there. So I think that's what happened, dude. I, I'm just I looked up the uh, looked up the the, the look at the chart here and. She was 10 links behind mm-hmm. when they top of the stretch. She's 10 links behind and she ran her down. Yep. That's incredible for a race that, you know, we all said like, oh, well, I like her, but she's just so up against it from a pace standpoint. And she was. Yeah. And to run a horse like Secret Oath, who, you know, really ran too good to lose, all things considered, was just a really, really incredible effort. It was. It was a really good race, and both of them deserve a lot of credit. I mean, they hit the wire together pretty much, and that, that was just a really good race. And one of them had to lose, you know. And and Clarier just went out, went out and got her. She's 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 as honest as they come, you know. She she does the same thing every time, and if she's good enough, she wins. Dude, okay, let's let's fast forward it here. So you can see her here. Yeah, she's had to make the move. Clarier is ten links behind at this point. And look, she's just gonna pick them up, and it's you kind of it's like, right here, like okay, she's gonna get second. It. If you have the exact, we're good about the second. And you're like about right here. You're like, yep. uh, I need this exact to the hold. I need it to hold to get to the wire. Yep, yep. And oh, you didn't. know, if, if you if I would have played that, which you know, obviously the, the odds would have been I could have done it because the uh, the secret oath over her straight was a lot less than the yeah. the other way around, I, but. You would have had that. It would have been a disgusting loss. And if you had Clarier, you're really happy. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was well. Yeah. You couldn't have thought you had much of a chance <laughs> up until about what when you said, "Well, maybe," you know. Well, yeah. Whenever when when Secret Oath made that move and, and Clarier was still way back. I mean, yeah. Secret Oath was one to nine to win yeah. that thing, just because yeah. like there's no even though Clarier good horse like she just can't get make up that much ground um all right so there you go the we we, we ended the day there you got a total of 33 percent roi 44 percent for me uh again 27 overall for you 24 i believe on mine so both of us sitting there about 25 percent overall roi through a month uh really really well done and and hey you know from right from now on we were well, three weeks from today, the Derby will be over. So we are all hands on deck for the Derby betting Bible and the Oaks betting Bible. We're going to have those available soon um, for pre-sale. You can get both of them as, as a combined package. Uh, I mean, dude, we're going to have 
we're gonna have the capsules on there. We're gonna have it for every uh, every horse. And this year we made a we made a decision. Like we're not just doing the twenty. We're we're covering any horse that's got a chance. <clears throat> Rich strike. Yeah. I, I love uh, I love uh, we got a couple emails last year. It's like you didn't even talk about him. I was like, well, what I would have said this horse has no chance. So I don't know if that would have influenced your wager or not. It's a wager on him. But. <laughs> yeah, we did a, we did the capsules for every horse last year, and Ethereal Road was the last one. You know, and yeah. of course he scratches it two days before, and and then Rich Strike gets in, and you're like, well, oh oh well, you know, it doesn't matter. Like no one needs to know anything about Rich Strike. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Paul is like, all right, we're, there's 26 that are uh, that are possible to get in the gate at this point. All 26 are going to have coverage in the yes. race. So you'll have an idea of every one of these horses. We'll have all that um, in the betting Bible for the Kentucky Derby, as well as everything you're used to, the bets exactly. We'll probably amp up the bankroll. We haven't really discussed the number. Um, you know, again, it's all going to be relative to your style and your comfort, how comfortable you are. We might play it for a $500 bankroll each day. You can obviously you know wager that down depending on what you're comfortable with. So, um, but just given the pools, given the types of races and the derby itself, you can go crazy. And if you want, um, it's a day that sometimes I think you need to bet more than your original you know daily allowance that you allow yourself. Yep, we'll have to see how the card comes out, and uh, we'll kind of set that as it goes. Like I said, but yeah, with two days and all those stakes, it's definitely a little bit uh, a little bit heavier of uh, action. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for checking out the Betting Bible review for the Lexington Stakes Day. And, yeah, we'll be back for some more for the Kentucky Derby and the Kentucky Oaks. See you guys. RacingDudes.com is your home for the best free picks for every race, every track across the country. We're ramping up for the 2023 Kentucky Derby, and we want you to join us in the fun. Subscribe to Racing Dudes' YouTube channel, like click the notification bell so you never miss a single video. Want to make money betting horses? Bet with the Racing Dudes.